is just around the corner. We have the NBA Draft Combine right now, and that's where we find Andy Katz. So Chet Holmgren, Jabari Smith, and Paolo Banchero. Uh, those are the three names that we hear at the very top. But for you, who's the top prospect going into the draft? Well, for me, it's Paolo Banchero. And the main reason uh, is let's look at who's maybe the hottest player in the NBA playoffs right now, and that's Jason Tatum. And I'm not just drawing that Duke parallel, but I think you could draw a parallel between Ben Caro's game and Tatum. A uh, bit of a tweener, can put the ball on the floor, certainly can score facing the basket, can score with the back to the basket, and is also a big-time player who relishes the moment. Um, and when you look at the top three, I think that Ben Caro is probably the most consistent, led his team to a Final Four. Uh, Jabari Smith certainly had moments, but he wasn't the focal point at Auburn. And Chet Holmgren, not to knock him, but I do think it's a fair criticism uh, about the physicality of the NBA and how he will handle that. He is sort of nicknamed the unicorn because we haven't seen a player like him who can not just be a rim protector, but can literally take two or three dribbles and he's already at the rim because he's so long. Uh, but I witnessed it in the NCAA tournament. He gets knocked down. And how will he handle that against some of the stronger players in the NBA? That's why I would pull back a little bit. And given the choice of those three, I think the player that's most ready right now is Paolo Boncaro. You know, Chet is the guy that seems to be worth the most diving into in the sense that we've heard this before with guys coming into the league. Kevin Garnett was too skinny, right? Turned out to be a Hall of Famer. And Kevin Durant, uh, before the draft, turned out to be a great player himself. But Chet Holmgren is different from those two guys. So the trepidation, why would a team, do you think, fall back on that trepidation and pick him so high when, like you said, there's other prospects there? Well, he's still something that we've rarely seen uh, at his size. The fact that he can put the ball on the floor, he can hit threes, uh, he can protect the rim, uh, he can post up, but that's where he's going to have to see most of his growth. And what we don't know is when he is a professional, when he is around professional nutritionists and strength coaches, you know, what kind of weight can they put on that body? We don't know that because he's not been in that environment as a high school player in just a brief time at Gonzaga. So that's the unknown. Uh, but certainly he has the potential and the touch to be, you know, an exceptional talent in the NBA. I just think also that pressure of being number one. Uh, when I look at these three individuals, I actually would rate Paolo Bancaro one, Jabari Smith two, and then Chet Holmgren three for players who could handle that number one ranking. You know, one other criticism of Chet early on in college basketball was he didn't want to talk to the media for whatever reason. He warmed up, he got better as the season went along, and certainly is in a much better place, which is normal for a freshman in May than he was in October. But I know the Gonzaga staff really had to work with him on that. And I just feel like that pressure being number one and all that goes with that, all the outside things that you have to do, I just don't know if he's ready for that on day one. Well, certainly the number one overall pick last year, Cade Cunningham, was ready for it. But he's not the reigning rookie of the year. In fact, it was the guy picked right outside of the top three in Scotty Barnes. So do you think that there's a potential Scotty Barnes in this draft that we're not talking about in these top three prospects that could essentially be the rookie of the year or be in the running for. Yeah. And his name is Jaden Ivey. Uh, and staying with this playoff theme uh, to me, Jaden Ivey is the next John Morant. Uh, and he's got that potential. He's an unbelievable athlete. Uh, one of the best dunkers you'll see uh, can take over games, hit big time shots in this past season for Purdue. They had a disappointing finish in the Sweet 16 against St. Peter's, but he is an exceptional athlete, a lover of the game. His mother, the head coach at Notre Dame, he grew up around the women's game, uh, a lot of great women's players, and then transitioned, obviously, into being an exceptional player at Purdue. He, so, as you know, he can make threes, can obviously run the floor, be, has become a better defender. Uh, I, I just think he's got all the package that if he ends up going four or maybe five, we'll see. I think whoever drafts in that position is getting a potential rookie of the year.